We have another incredible elite neuroencoding specialist to bring up here right now to give us a neuro talk. We are so excited to be bringing up, you might have heard her earlier all the way from London, UK. Please help us give an incredibly warm welcome to Nene Ifuku. All right, Nene. Have you ever felt so embarrassed that you wanted the ground underneath you to open up and swallow you in that moment? Because of that shame, that feeling of unworthiness, worried what other people are thinking of you. I mean, even if you haven't experienced it, I am certain you know someone who has. Hi, I am Nene, and I'm a self-love and confidence coach, and I work with reserved women who do not want anyone knowing their business. So I help them get clarity in what they desire, to reconnect them to the core of their being and beyond. I am an elite urine coding specialist, a love attraction coach, and I've helped thousands. And today, I want to talk about how we have the power to change the way we see ourselves by sharing three key frameworks to self-mastery. And I want you to know that we all, you know, most people want that confidence. Most people want that certainty. But nobody wants to go through that. I mean, we've all had embarrassment. We've, we've all had our embarrassment, right? So, I, um, I remember... <laughs> but you know what? All of this, all of <laughs> We've all had that embarrassment. And um, back in, um, I remember, I mean, even if you haven't experienced, uh, gosh. <laughs> you know what you've probably done? You've probably allowed that to stop you from doing something you've always wanted to do. You've probably allowed an incident that happened in the past to hold you, to stop you. So you hesitated, you procrastinated, you didn't move forward well. You know what? I'm the same way too. The same thing happened to me. I remember... Um, when I was about 11 years old back in Nigeria, I was this shy. I was this shy, timid girl um, who was self conscious and shy. And one day in class, the teacher was handing out a test paper, and as he was heading towards me, he looked so confused and bewildered. When he um, got up to me, he asked me one of the questions in a test paper, which I knew, and I happily responded. He looked even more confused and bewildered. I, he then handed me my paper. I could barely recognize it, as it was covered in red ink, markings, and scribbles. And then he asked, Nene? Why didn't you write what you just said on the paper? Eh? Now I'm confused. I did, sir. No, you didn't. What you wrote is goggle would do. And in that moment, I could feel and hear my classmates roar in laughter. And I just wanted to disappear. And I felt crushed. And I became introverted. And a lot of people think that all introverts are shy which is further from the truth as only a tiny percentage of introverts are shy. 
So when that happened to me, I just coasted through life. I did not want the attention, but I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was. But what I was certain about was I did not want to feel that embarrassment again. So, about eight years later, we moved to the UK, and that's when I was officially diagnosed as being dyslexic. It came as such relief. At the same token, self-loathing. I said, this is how my life is going to be resorted to. I then became interested in sign language. It was such a visual language. I was enjoying the classes. And then one day in class, the tutor was just curious, and she just assumed that I wasn't practicing. Nene, why aren't you practicing? I am practicing. I need to see myself doing it. You need to see yourself what? For it to go into my long term, I need to see me doing it. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm dyslexic. You're dyslexic? What are you doing here? You can't be an interpreter. You need help. So how are you going to help deaf people if you need help? It had never crossed my mind. I didn't even know it was a thing. I went to a whole new low. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not strong enough. You're not pretty enough. You're too tall. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're too... It absolutely crushed me. So here's my outcome today, is for you to get something you can use because you can get that confidence, that certainty, and go beyond that which has held you in the past. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a piece of paper because I'm going to have you grab some notes. And I want you to write on top of that paper, intention. So, here's the greatest part. It was around the same time Michael Jackson was coming to town. He was promoting his tour a few years ago. And he called it, this is it. Woo. It spoke to me. It woke me up. And I declared to myself, I am going to be that interpreter. And never again would anyone ever tell me what I can and cannot do. Thank you. That is step number one to have three key frameworks to self-mastering. What is your intention? What is your, this is it. Now take 30 seconds now and just write down what comes to the top of your mind to your mind. Our brain wants to keep us safe. It wants to make sure we're okay. So when we make this intention to change, it gets all confused. Like a rubber band, when you stretch it and let go, it snaps back to its original state. But when you constantly stretch it, it loses its ability to contract. And the same is true for us. And that And that brings, so what I did was, I had seeked out other interpreters who were also dyslexic, as there is no point in inventing the wheel, because everything we want to do, somebody else has already done it, right? So that brings us to our second key framework of consistent, committed habits. So I realized that I actually needed to work on me. I needed to work more on my belief and confidence in myself. So I seeked out coaches. And here's the thing. I modeled what they did and said. And here's some of the few things I found. They said things they were grateful for themselves. They would work on affirming new beliefs and identity for themselves. They will go up to the mirror, look themselves in the eye, and say they love themselves and high-five themselves. And they did these things over and over again. And they did this over and over again. And research has shown that 
So this is what I actually want you to do before that, before I tell you what the research said, is whatever it is that you want to do, just take 30 seconds right now. What is that thing that you want to do? What are those people who have done that which you want to do? And just write it down. And be committed to doing those things. Because if you're not committed, you'll be interested. And if you're interested, you only do what's convenient. And if you're committed, you will do whatever it takes to get you to that next level. Because research has shown that it takes about 66 to 365 days for a whole new, to create a whole new pattern, which then becomes a new way of being. And whatever it is that you are committed to doing, whatever it is, do it for at least 100 days. And when we talk about changing the brain, we're talking about creating and reinforcing new, more powerful mental and emotional pattern so that we are in control of them than it's been in control of us. And that brings us to our third and final key framework. It becomes who we are. It becomes, you know, we are open to experiences, relationships, and to the world. If I had, suppose I had stayed in that place of self-loathing, unworthiness, incapability, I would have never have been able to reach and get all this opportunity. I even had the opportunity to interpret for the Queen, the late Her Majesty, the Queen of England. Who would have thought that I am doing this when I was this shy, limited person? And I want you to know, you are, you are made for more. You might have thought before this talk that, you know, this is how it is for me. This is how life is going to be. But now you know that there's something you can do. You can start having that self-awareness for yourself. That's the intention. What is your this? And then start working and building about those things. You're having a self-accountability. What are those things that you're doing daily? which then makes the mastery gets developed. It becomes your new you, your new way of life, your new being, your new lifestyle. And I applaud you that when you do and say these things, that you would have that confidence, that certainty, that capability, and the belief in yourself to become the CEO of your life. I would love to have this conversation started, carrying on. And I'd love for you to reach out with me at um, www.connectednene. And I want you to know that your voice matters and it's your time to own it. Thank you. Give her a hand. No, no, oh, no, no. Give her a hand, Nini, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Now, here's a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Here's one of the things I wanted to point out. Your bravery in doing this, this is exactly what Stephen said earlier about building that muscle, yes? And I want to tell you, this was me when I first got started. Seriously. I did, you know, it, I was awful. You were spectacular. Give her a hand one more time, please. That was awesome. Great job.